Hey everybody, this is Jimmy and you're watching Jimmy America Photo because apparently Jimmy America Photography is too long a name for YouTube. Today I'm talking about the Photex BG D7000 Better Grip for the Nikon D7000. And now that we've got the correct pronunciation of Nikon out of the way, let's jump right into the review. I love this thing. I ordered it the same day as my camera, and surprise surprise it came about two weeks before the camera did. And I'm not entirely ashamed to announce that I walked around for the first two weeks going like this. The rubber on this thing feels great. It's really rubbery, really grippy, better than the D7000, and after about six months of using it, it's still fantastic. On the BG D7000, you've got the locking wheel, which bugs me, but more on that later. Eight-way directional pad, auto exposure slash auto focus lock, front and back control dials, shutter release, and an on-off switch, which does not turn off the camera, but only turns off the grip. On the bottom, there's the standard quarter inch screw mount, and get ready for this, because I'm about to throw a lot of technical abbreviations at you. The EN EL15 battery tray, which has a well hidden flap so that if you have an EP5B battery and an EH5A AC adapter, you can still use this battery grip while having your camera plugged into the wall, which is great news for those studio shooters out there. The grip does not come with a battery, but it does come with two battery trays. One that holds the EN EL15 or EN EL15A battery, and one that holds six AA batteries. Now, I haven't tried this, but I have heard that if you use six double A's, it's just gonna chew right through them, so maybe only in an emergency. It also comes with a multi-language instruction manual, which is <laughs> a little bit funny. It says here that the BGD7000 takes one or two EN EL15 batteries. It doesn't, it only takes one. Uh, it goes on to say that step one is remove the battery from the camera, and you don't have to do that either, because you actually have one battery in the camera and one in the grip. So clearly, despite mentioning the BGD7000 several times, uh, these instructions are not meant for this grip. In fact, there's a little picture diagram down the bottom on how to install it, and yeah, I'm gonna say that's a Canon camera, probably, from the looks of things, a 400D, maybe. But that's okay, because the installation of this battery is idiot-proof, and this idiot's gonna show you how. Okay, so first, we're just gonna pull out the battery tray, get your battery, Lock it in place. Battery's in there. You'll notice that on the bottom of your D7000, you've got this little rubber piece here, and you just wanna peel that off. Put your camera down, don't do this outside. Then you've got a little tray here for this little rubber grip so it doesn't get lost. Handy. So just push that in. Line up this little silver piece with this hole here. in the lock. Done. To make sure that the battery was installed correctly and is working, you just hit the menu, go into the setup menu, which is the little wrench one, then go down until you see the battery info tab, and you should have D7000 battery and MBD11 battery. With the grip attached, let's face it, it looks awesome and super professional. Please, photograph me! It adds a little bit of weight, but I like that, and it makes vertical shooting a breeze. The grip cost me $100 off eBay and compared to the $350 that the MBD11 would have cost me, and looking at them, you honestly can't tell them apart. They look identical. The MBD11 has a magnesium shell, same as your D7000, and that's probably where most of the price difference comes into play. Actually, no, it's probably the Nikon part that plays most of the difference. I don't know about the MBD11, but the BGD7000 is not weatherproof, unlike the D7000. So if you're out and it starts raining, you gotta take off the grip, put the rubber piece back on, make sure you're doing it in a dry place, and then continue to shoot. Which is a pain, but it's not really something that I'm gonna have to encounter every day, so it's not really bothering me. Something that does bother me every day is a little clicking wheel you get from the locking wheel. Oh, I love you, locking wheel. Another little criticism is that the AF-AE locking button feels a little bit squishy. Like with the Nikon buttons, if you push them, you get to a certain point where it just kind of goes and kind of locks, and you don't get that with the button on the grip. It just kind of feels squishy. I don't know, it's just kind of hard to describe. Like, it doesn't feel buttony. 
And to be honest, it's the only part of the grip that's showing anywhere after using six months because the AF A text is coming up. Now these might seem like really petty little criticisms, and they are, don't get me wrong, but there is one deep dark secret that the BG D7000 is hiding. One terrible, earth-shattering fault that the government can try to keep under wraps all they want, but someone needs to speak the truth. And that secret is... Pausing for dramatic effect. Hold my breath. I forgot what it was. The command has to go the opposite way to the camera. Oh, no! Okay, so it's not really that big of a deal. <laughs> Why? Why would he do this to me? When you turn the command dial to the right, on the back of your camera, you get a faster shutter speed. When you flip the vertical and you turn it to the right, you get a slower shutter speed. It's the same story for the front dial, and to be honest, it's not the end of the world. Or is it? It is 2012. So there you have it. The Fortex BG D7000. Great battery grip. Highly recommended for anyone out there who wants to look a little bit professional, add just a little bit of weight, or maybe just make shooting vertically a little bit easier. Maybe you'll save a few bucks and get a China branded battery instead of a Nikon one, but this is one area where I really suggest that you splurge a little. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.